Hi, welcome to Barb's Book Spot. Hi, welcome to Barb's Book Spot. Today we're going to celebrate poetry. I think poetry is a huge part of our lives, and sometimes we're not even aware from the time we learn nursery rhymes or do hand claps or jump rope rhymes, when we're listening to lyrics to songs, or even when we just hear beautiful language, poetry is entering our lives. And I think it's so much a part of uh, who we are and how we express ourselves. We need to help children find the joy in it. Maybe not dissecting it and understanding the mean, meaning or the theme, but maybe just truly enjoying it because then it will become part of their lives to share all through their life with others. Um, at the end of this video, um, I'm going to put some uh, websites that you can check for online um, collections of poetry that are great for sharing with children. There are some by the uh, uh, Poetry Foundation, and there are some by the Academy of American Poets. There's a Children's Poet Laureate selected every two years, and those are some sites I think you might want to check out when you're looking for poetry to share with children. But today, I'd like to share some great new books that we've got in. The first one I'd like to share is called Fresh Picked Poetry, A Day at the Farmer's Market. And what I like about this book is that it appeals to all of your senses. It's vibrant and it's exciting and you can just almost put yourself there. You can visualize what it feels like to be at the market. So what I'm going to do, because I think poetry should be read aloud, is just read you one poem. And I'm not going to show you the illustration until after I read the poem. The illustrations are done by Amy Huntington. The author of these poems is Michelle Schaub, and this is published by Charles Bridge. All the books today are published in 2017, so these are our newest ones in. This is called Pile Up. Farmer Rick's meticulous when setting up his stand. He places all his items into stacks precisely planned. His cauliflower towers take him eons to align. His pyramids of peppers show impeccable design. Not one sloppy heap of beets, no single misplaced pea. Each veggie castle he constructs has perfect symmetry. But when Miss Mallory arrives, Rick sports a wary smile. She always picks her produce from the bottom of the pile. So you can imagine what will happen. But look at the illustration. Everything we heard in the poem is there. So it's a wonderful combination of words and images. I would love to go on a field trip to a farmer's market with kids and have them write their own poems about what they saw and smelled and heard at the farmer's market. The poems throughout this book are very different from one another. This is a much less rigid formal rhyme scheme. We see these little swirls of smoke and aroma. I'll just read you one. Alluring aromas float over tent tops, a whiff of vanilla, a whisper of spice. So again, a different feel a different sense being appealed to. Back here we have another poem, and I like this one. We have Antonio's old time sharpening. It emphasizes the grr sound. So we hear, can you find the grinder? Listen for the grr. A growly groan as steel meets stone and wheels spin in a blur. So we get the sense of that playing with the sounds of poetry. There's even a poem in here that's written for two voices. So one person would read this column, one person would read this column, you're answering back and forth, and in the bold, centered type, that you both read that together. Those are a lot of fun to do with kids, and there are a lot of these poems for two voices out there that you can find in your library. At the end, you would expect we'd hear all about the poems, but instead we hear all about farmer's markets and why it's a good idea to um, go to them and how we can save um, our health and we can save the environment and great things about farmers markets in a few little blurbs here. So we're an advocate of natural grown produce. So I love this book. My next book is very different. This one is called Out of Wonder, Poems Celebrating Poets. And it's written by Kwame Alexander. And also it says with Chris Colderley and Marjorie Wentworth. So the three of them write the poems. The illustrator, Akua Holmes, um, does, illustrates the different poems and she tries to be sensitive to the original um, poet who is being homaged and then she also tries to be sensitive to the theme or the, the tone of the poem. I'm going to show you the back of the book because it gives you a list of the poets, the traditional poets, the famous poets that these three younger poets are honoring. Um, and then let me just show you an example of what happens. Uh, what 
you might know the, the Robert Frost poem, um, Stopping by a Woods in the Snowy Evening. Whose woods are these? I think I know. Or you might know um, one of his poems about birches, or maybe two paths converged in a wood. I took the one less traveled by. So F Robert Frost, a famous poet, we probably learned or heard some of his poems. Most of them were about nature, about woods, about the journey through life as compared to a journey through nature or across the landscape. So the poem here that's written by Marjorie Wentworth, it's called In Every Season, celebrates Robert Frost by sort of emulating his style a little bit, and it talks about woods and nature as a journey through life. I'll just read you the first two lines. In every season I have wandered on paths that wind through fields and woods. Beside my farm marked by low stone walls, strung across the hills like an unwound string. And then our illustration, we see a man getting ready to enter the woods. So every poem is like that. It's sort of an homage to the original poet, capturing the theme, the form, something like that. Here's another one. This book, or this poem is dedicated to um, Kwame Alexander, and it, uh, it's, pardon me, it's written by Kwame Alexander, and it's dedicated to Walter Dean Myers. Now, Walter Dean Myers is a famous and award-winning author for children and young adults, and many of his books have to do with basketball and urban youth, and so this poem, poem captures that. The Poet Inside Me, celebrating Sandra Cisneros. She's a Mexican and American citizen, and her poem, or her book, A House on Mango Street, has been widely read in high schools and junior highs over the years. It's an award-winning book, but she's, she, we see her Mexican heritage being captured here. There's a poem in here dedicated to Chief Dan George, who's a native person, uh, an indigenous person, and he was also from Canada. Um, but we might have heard some of his speeches or his poetry over the years. And there's one for Maya Angelou, very famous and well-loved African-American poet and strong woman. Um, so we see a beautiful, colorful homage and piece dedicated to her. And then in the end of this book, information about all the individual poets that are being um, sort of, I don't want to say parodied because it's more than a parody, let's just say honored by these wonderful new poems by young poets today. This book is published by Candlewick Press, and again, it's 2017. This book is written by Nikki Grimes, and Nikki Grimes is quite a poet and author herself. She does something a little similar where she pays homage to previous poets, but she is honoring poets from the Harlem Renaissance. Now this book was published by Bloomsbury, and what she's done, let me see if I can just give you a, a glimpse here, is she's thought about um, po poets from the Harlem Renaissance that spoke to her, that helped her see her identity as an African American woman, that um, maybe she remembered memorizing a poem, or maybe her local library was named after one of these famous people because she grew up in Harlem. So she took a form, and she plays with form. She took a form called the golden shovel. And what the golden shovel does is it takes either one line or all of the lines of a short poem, and then you use those to create a new poem. So here, let me show you an example. This is for a poet by County Cullen, who was a Harlem Renaissance poet. Okay, In the very first line of his poem, I have wrapped my dream in a silken cloth. Okay. So here is Nikki Grimes' poems called A Safe Place. And she takes, if you look at the very end of each line, I have wrapped my dreams. That same first line is repeated in the very last line of her poem, uh, last word of every line of her poem. That's hard to say. It's easier to see. And then there are different illustrators throughout this book. There's a whole list of illustrators. I've included them in the bibliography, but again, they're listed on the back. Um, we have... Uh, Cosby Cabrera, Gregory Christie, Pat Cummings, Brian Pinckney, E.B. Lewis, James Ransom, Javaka Steptoe, um, plenty of them. So each of the poems has a different illustration, a different illustrator to help capture the theme or the tone. Here's another example. In this one, her shovel, she took the whole first verse, the whole first stanza of the poem, and made those the last words of her lines. Now you can also make it the first word of your line. Um, there are different ways you can vary the form. But basically she's playing with the form but keeping the original inspiration. And here's David's soul. Again, she took the first line of a poem, made it the last, line, last word of her lines, and a different illustrator, a very different feel to this illustration. At the end here, we get the 
poet biographies, the original poets from the Harlem Renaissance. And then after those, we learn a little bit about these artists who have contributed to this book and a little bit also about our contemporary poet, Nikki Grimes. Wonderful book to share. And I like to think of this one, um, when both of these last two, when you're doing an honor to a previous poet, you can do that with books, with novels, with lessons, with units that you're doing. What comes to mind is um, the book The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. If you remember, there's a famous Robert Frost poem mentioned in that, Nothing Gold Can Stay, and it's one of the main characters favorite poems and it becomes very central to the meaning of the book and the characters identities and kids love that kids remember the book they remember that poem and some of them can remember by heart the whole poem pony boy in in that novel did so poetry can be integrated you don't have to dissect the poem you just have to stick it in there and let people become aware of it this last poem is a lot of fun it's a poem by john keats called a song about myself um, this is a book published by Candlewick Press, and it's illustrated by Chris Rashka. This poem was written by Keats when he was 22, no, he was about 18 years old, because he died at age 22, and he died in 1821. He was on a journey from England up to Scotland, and he decided to write a letter to his younger sister, and he wanted to make her laugh. He wanted it to be lighthearted, and this was a very heavy time in poetry. There were big, important classical poets, and this, what he wrote, is sort of nonsense poems. It's doggerel. It was for fun, and it almost reminds me, the, the, the pace of it and the meter of it almost reminds me of rap today. So let me show you a little bit of Chris Roschka's illustrations for this poem that Keats wrote. That's his end papers. We have a map with him heading north to Scotland. And I'll just read you a little bit of this. A naughty boy was he. He would not stop at home. He could not quiet be. Now, that's not the very beginning, but I wanted you to hear the, the reversal of the grammar in that sentence or that phrase. We normally today wouldn't say he could not quiet be. We would say he could not be quiet. So that's fun to play with word order in poems. And Keats did that. A lot of the classical poets did that. And then after every, like, maybe three or four or five lines, we come to the end of the stanza with, and followed his nose to the north to the north, then followed his nose to the north. Slightly different meter. It almost reminds me of the owl and the pussycat, you know, when they went to see, um, you know, um, they dined on mince and slices of quince and they ate with a runcible spoon. You know, that, that kind of a pacing comes on. Um, so we follow the line, to follow the arrows. He's going north. We see some full page spreads. We see him scribbling. He talks about his poetry as scribbles in comparison to these masters. And I want to read you just a little bit because you can emphasize his words a little differently. In spite of the might of the maid, nor afraid of his granny good, he often would hurly burly, get up early and go by hook or crook to the brook. Now, I really stopped at the end of each line. I'm going to read this with a little bit more fluid pacing. And bring home Miller's thumb, tittle bat, not over fat, minnow small as the stall of a glove, not above the size of a nice little baby's little fingers. Now, the, the lines look the same, but how you inflect poetry when you read it aloud can change the meaning, the tone, the feeling, the vibe that's given off. And I could almost hear myself reading this more like a rap, but I'm not going to do that. In the end, we get an illustrator's note, a little bit about Keats and his life and this poem, which was in the, a letter, and you can go back and find documentation for that. Very fun. I think children would like to write a poem from their own perspective, a song of themselves. Very fun and easygoing poem. So whatever you do during April, which is National Poetry Month, celebrate poetry, whether it's by day or if you have a poem in your pocket or just to work one into your lesson. Enjoy. And as always, happy reading.